Welcome back, Honors Algebra 2. Um, section 10.5, Day 2 here, permutation combinations. And we may combine Day 1 and Day 2, um, so just letting you know. Uh, permutations with repetition. So if there's n objects where P are alike and Q are alike, then how many different ways can you arrange the word Georgetown? And so again, because you have some repeating letters here in this word, then what ends up happening is you take the number of letters that you have. One, two, three, four, five. There's 10 letters, so that's 10 factorial. So if there was no repeating letters whatsoever, it would be 10 factorial in the number of different ways that you can scramble up the word Georgetown. With that being said, there are some repeating letters. So for every letter that repeats, that's where the P and the Q. So there are two Gs, so that's two factorial. And there are two Os. So that's a two factorial. And there are two E's, so another two factorial. Now, if there was three of a letter, it would be three factorial and so on. So I'm going to pull out a calculator here um, and help me out. So I have 10 factorial. So I want to know what 10 math probability factorial and we're going to divide that by now i two factorial is just two times two times two so we're going to divide that by eight so that's two factorial two factorial two factorial and so how many different ways could you arrange the word georgetown and it would be 400 453,600 ways There's five digit garage code. How many possibilities are there for the code? So now there's 10, 10 numbers, one through nine plus zero. So how many different possibilities do we have here? Um, you're talking about 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Because you can have any number be the first one, and any number be the second one, and any number be the third, and so on, the fourth and the fifth. So you're talking about 10 to the fifth power. So 100,000 different garage door codes. Um, now, what happens if the first number cannot be a zero, and then you can't repeat any number? So there's only nine possibilities then as the first number, because again, zero is out of the question. And then zero's back in, but whatever number you picked in the second one is out. Eight times seven times six times five. Oops, too many. Sorry, times six. And so if there's nine possibilities in the first, times nine times eight times seven, you would end up with 27,000. 216. So when you start putting restrictions on what can happen, then you start limiting the number of possibilities. Now, a little more challenging here. If there are four landscape photos, seven portrait photos, what is the probability of choosing two portrait photos? Now, let's talk about the total possibilities. So we're talking about combination, seven choosing two. So that is literally, if I have seven possible photos and I'm going to choose two of them and the order doesn't matter. So using my calculator right now, I'm going to go figure out the possibilities here. So math, probability. We're doing a combination because the order doesn't make any difference. Seven photos, choosing two of them. So there's 21 different ways for that to occur. So 21. Now, in the top, and this is why this is a more challenging probability, of the three portrait photos, I want two of those. So the success here is literally getting the two portrait photos out of the three portrait photos. And so a combination of, I'm going to do this one by hand. So I end up getting three. So there's a one in seven chance of getting both photos to be portrait. 
All right, last one. Most challenging here. If there's a stack of 26 books, 16 fiction, and 10 nonfiction, I randomly choose eight books. What is the probability that I get four of each? So first of all, there's 26 total books. So let's just actually come up with the possibilities here. So 26, and I'm going to choose eight books. So that is the total number of possibilities here. So I'm going to go to my calculator and do 26, choosing eight. So math, probability, number three, 26, choosing eight. So there are... 1,562,275 possibilities here. So 1,500, I'm going to have to go back and forth, 62,275. So that's how many possibilities. Now, I, my success here is of the 16 fiction books, I get two of those, or I get four of those. And, and notice they use the word and, of the 10 nonfiction books, I get four of those. Remember, we're talking about the word and. So one has to occur and the other has to occur. You're going to multiply those two together. So pull out a calculator now. 16 choosing four, 10 choosing four. So 16, uh, math. Probability, 16, whoops, I'm going to have to clear that and do that again. Math, probability, option three, 16, choosing four books, times, whoops, uh, clear, I got an arrow out to the right here, times, Apologize for the interruption there, so there might have been a break in action. Um, I got interrupted. So, 16 choosing 4 times, and I got to go back and forth through 10 choosing 4. So, I'm going to go to math. And again, depending on how old your calculator is, you might have to actually put the 10 in before you do this. In this newer calculator, I don't have to do that. So, 10 choosing four. And so there's 382,200. So going back here to show my work, 38220. And so now I just want to reduce this or actually find it as a decimal or, so I'm going to go back to my calculator and I want 382200 divided by 156. 2275. And so if you wrote 24.5%, writing it as percent, that's fine. If you go to math, enter, enter, I can actually do this as a fraction. So we're talking about 1176, 4807. So 1176, 4807, or if you wrote 24.5%, I would take that as well. So your homework assignment is a worksheet. This might be combined with Section 10.5, Day 1. So just be aware of that, that we might have a double assignment on this day. So if you have any questions, please ask. And good luck.